Welcome to another demo video of the Red Hat OpenShift Container Platform. My name is Philip Lamb, and I am the DevOps Solutions Architect for Red Hat's Global Partners and Alliances ISV team. Today, I'd like to demonstrate how easy it is to implement GitOps on OpenShift with GitLab. GitOps is an operational framework that takes DevOps best practices used for application development, such as version control, collaboration, compliance, and CI/CD, and applies them to infrastructure automation. GitLab is a web-based DevOps lifecycle tool that provides a Git repository manager, providing wiki, issue tracking, and continuous integration and deployment pipeline features, all using an open source license. In this video, we will first demonstrate a simple running application written in Node.js. We will then install the GitLab runner operator and configure it. Next, we will take a look at an example GitLab CI configuration file. And finally, we will make a code change, commit it, push it, and then take a look at the results. Let's get started. Okay, so here we are in the OpenShift console. You can see that I'm in the developer mode. I'm looking at the topology here. Uh, we have our Node app, and if we take a look at what it's doing, it's running just a standard, uh, standard web app. Close out of that, and uh, now we're gonna go ahead and install the operator. So hop over to operators, then operator hub and we're going to use the GitLab runner we've got some installation instructions here we'll look at that later and click install we want to use this in our installed namespace here DSE GitOps that's our example project and click install and just give this a minute all right so now the runner is installed um, you can see we've got some basic information here around the usage. Um, now, in order to get started with this, we're going to first need to get a uh, registration token from GitLab. So we'll go over to uh, my GitLab project here. In order to do that, we hop to settings and then CI CD. And then if you see here, runners, expand that out. And then we're gonna be using a specific runner that we configure. So we'll take this registration token and copy it. Next, we're going to create a secret in OpenShift from YAML, and I've got some here that I used earlier. There we are. Uh, so that's my registration token. I'll click Create. Now we'll hop back over to Installed Operators, and we're going to create a runner now. So we've got two views, form view and the YAML view. We're gonna use the YAML view just for simplicity's sake. Now the token that we created is called GitLab Runner Secret. We create and give that a few minutes to spin up. Uh, here we can see that the runner is now uh, running. Great, everything's configured uh, correctly. And uh, now we just want to check back with GitLab to see that the runner has phoned home and is now available. So we're back in under settings CI CD under runners and we can see we do indeed have a available runner. So the communication is good to go. Now that our runner is running and configured correctly, we're next going to take a look at the uh, GitLab CI YAML file. Well, that's where all the uh, magic happens. It's in the root of the, the project. The file naming convention is .gitlab-ci.yaml. So we'll take a look at it. All right, so that is a pretty big file. Let's break it down. What we're doing is establishing some, some defaults, configuring the stages our pipeline will contain, specifying some global configurations, and then for each stage, we describe the job we want to run. You can see a few common elements from each of these jobs. First, they have a human readable label. Then we see they extend the default stage we defined earlier and define when in the pipeline the job is run. Now we specify our scripts for the job and then optionally establish rules. As an example, in the cases above, you can see that the job prepare OpenShift environment production would only be run in, if the branch we're merging into was labeled prod. This allows you to be more or less picky about what occurs on different environments. In the case of this pipeline, we're taking the API objects described in the .openshift directory and the appropriate subdirectory and running an OC apply on them. If the apply succeeds, the job proceeds to the next stage where we build and package a new iteration of the application. The final stage, deployed, is configured to require manual action in order to roll out the new project. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's commit our pipeline code and see what it looks like on GitLab. 
All right, so here we are back at the console uh, looking at the topology view. Uh, I just wanted to demonstrate to you that uh, there's no, uh, no magic happening right now. We just have a single pod uh, running for our app. Uh, everything looks good. So what we're going to do is change the number of running pods for the replicas from one to, let's say two, we'll, we'll add two. All right, now uh, we want to add that code change, commit it. And push, and there you go. Give that a second, and we'll hop back over to GitLab now. So now that we've committed it, if you hop over to CICD and take a look at pipelines, you can see that we have one running that we just launched. So right now it's preparing, so it's setting up the environment. Uh, and then the next couple of steps are gonna be build, package, and deploy. We'll stop here and we'll let it finish. All right, so now we see that we've prepared, built, and packaged, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, the deploy process is a manual one that requires us to click. We will click and wait for that to deploy. All right, so now that we see that we have successfully deployed our application, all stages in the pipeline have passed, and now let's go take a look at our topology to see if uh, any changes were effective. And we can see here, we do indeed have two pods. When we look at the build history, we can see that we had this completed just a few minutes ago. And that's it. So let's recap. We've installed the operator and configured a secret and a runner using the operator. We reviewed an example CI configuration file, and after making a code change and pushing it, saw that it had the desired operational effect. Thank you for watching this demo video. We'll continue to release more in the future. See you then.